Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll cover how to set up hourly rates, track billable hours, and invoice clients in Clockify. To quickly get you started, let's first set up your client base. Clockify lets you create a client base by simply typing in a client name and then adding their details, such as a billing address, email address, currency in which they will be billed, or any other important notes. You can even add multiple currencies and have a specific one for each client, so you can bill them in their own currency. When your client base is all ready, you can proceed to create projects you will be working on. Besides naming a project, you can assign them a specific color to visually differentiate it from the rest, and then you can assign it to a specific client. When you click on the project, the task list will be empty. Here you can create tasks to further categorize your time. Now you can assign specific people or groups and choose if the task is billable or non-billable. If you're often working on the same type of project, you can save that project as a template. So the next time you create a new one, you can quickly base it on the template project. It'll inherit its tasks and settings, which you can always override later. Next, let's set up your hourly rates. The billable rate is applied only to billable entries, and the cost rate is applied no matter if the entry is billable or non-billable. You can define multiple rates in Clockify, but only one will be applied to a time entry. The main rule with Clockify's rates is that less specific rates get overridden by more specific rates. In the workspace settings, you can define a global hourly rate, which will be applied to all time entries. Here you can also define your currency. If you have specific rates for project tasks, you can enable them here. If you have a team, on the team page you can set up an hourly rate for each team member individually. In the project settings, you can define the project hourly rate and define whether the track time on it is billable by default. On the Tasks tab, you can set an hourly rate for each task. And finally, in the Projects Access tab, you can define specific rates for members working on this specific project. If you wish to compare what you bill your clients versus what you pay your team, activate Cost and Profit Analysis here. Then set cost rates in the same way you set billable rates. Also, when you're setting a schedule for your team, you'll be able to see the predicted billable and cost amount for that time period. Just make sure to enable this option in the Workspace settings, as it is an additional one. Once you set up projects and rates, you can start tracking time. Just go to the time tracker, type what you're working on, select a project or task to categorize the activity, and then start the timer. Once you're done, you can stop the timer. You can restart the timer on an activity by clicking the play button. If you forgot to start the timer, you can manually add time entries like this, or edit an existing one. You'll notice that the billable icon is switched from gray to blue when a project is selected. This is because we've defined in that project settings that its time is billable by default. You can always change the billable status of an entry by clicking on this icon. If you have a team and you don't want them to see or change the billable status, you can hide the icon from them by checking who can change the billable status in the workspace settings. Here you can also control who can see hourly rates and amounts, as well as who can see track time. In addition to tracking time via the web app, you can track time via the mobile and desktop app or use an extension to track time inside other web apps, plus enter time manually or in a timesheet or calendar. All data is synced online, so you can track time in any way that suits you. Now let's cover reporting. The dashboard shows you a breakdown of billable versus non-billable hours across days and projects, and how much you've earned in the selected time period. Here you can also see your most tracked project and the client for which you track the most time. For more details, let's go to the summary report. Down here, you can see a breakdown by project and what you've earned. You can also break down the time by date, user, and so on, and then expand some groups to view it in more detail. If you want to see a report for just one client, you can select them here and then filter the report. Similarly, you can filter the report by other dimensions, like user, status, and so on. You can export all of the data as PDF, Excel, or CSV right here. For cleaner reports, you can use rounding. Just set the rounding options in the workspace settings and then switch the rounding on and off in reports. Afterwards, if you wish to share reports with clients, you can create a live link and share it with them so they can track what you're working on in real time. Now let's cover how you can check the budget and progress on projects. The project page shows you all of your projects, time tracked, amount earned, and a progress bar. You can sort projects by clicking on the progress column to see what's about to go over the budget at the top. Click on a project's progress bar to see more details. Budget estimates for projects are a great way to set clear expectations with clients and accurately track project progress. In a project settings, you can set a total budget for the whole project, or it can be task-based. If you're working on retainer projects, you can mark that the estimates reset every month, week, or year, 
And finally, if the project has additional expenses, the budget can include billable expenses as well, which will then be extracted from the set budget. You can see the progress for that project in the status tab. As you track time, the progress bar gets filled. The project will also reset every month if you've enabled it in the project settings. In the forecasting tab, you can see the forecasted project completion or project budget spending. Forecasting uses track time, scheduled assignments, and defined estimates to calculate future time or budget spending. So you can easily spot if your projects will go over the deadline or define budget limitations. To get notified when projects approach their budget, you can set up automatic alerts. Like when a project reaches 75% of its budget, send an email to the project manager. Or you can set another alert, like when a task estimate reaches 100%, to notify the task assignees. Once you finish a project, you can archive it to keep things clean. People won't be able to track time on the archived project, but all of its data will remain available in reports. In addition to tracking time, you can also track project and business-related expenses, on the web or on mobile. You can categorize them by project and category. Enter an amount, add an optional note, and attach a receipt. If you choose a category with a unit price, you can just enter the unit instead. You can see other people's expenses here and define as many categories as your business needs. In the expense report, you can see all your recorded expenses. You can edit them, filter them by client or status, and export. Finally, let's cover how to invoice clients. To create an invoice, you need to select the client you'd like to bill, the currency to be displayed on it, its name, which is pre-filled based on the previous one, and choose the issue and due dates. Invoices will display your company's information and logo, your client's name, and the address at the top. To actually populate an invoice, import your billable time and expenses for certain projects and a period of time. You can choose how your imported time will be displayed, either as a single item, detailed, with each time entry being listed separately, or grouped, where you can group hours by project, user, or date. Our next toggle switch will determine whether your time entries will be rounded up to the nearest number, which, like I said before, can be adjusted in the workspace settings. Billable expenses can be added as well, and if you do include them, you can also group them in multiple ways, through categories, users, projects, or in detail, where you can choose which exact information will be displayed. An invoice can include discounts and taxes as well. Taxes can be applied to all items, or the ones you choose, depending on your tax settings. In the invoice settings, you can choose which taxation mode will be the default one, simple or compound, but you can always override this setting for a specific invoice, if needed. You can also add a subject and note to an invoice for any additional information. Once you're done populating your invoice, you can send the invoice to your client directly from Clockify. You can change the preset subject and text of the email, which the client will receive with the invoice. You can attach the invoice as a PDF, send a copy to yourself, and finally include a separate expense report. Once sent, the invoice's status will be automatically changed to sent. You'll now be able to filter out all of the invoiced or uninvoiced entries in the detailed report, thanks to the automatic invoice tag. For more information on how to set up invoice settings and customize the way in which data is displayed, make sure you check out the other video tutorials. If you're using QuickBooks for invoicing, you can connect it with Clockify in the Integrations tab. Once you're connected, you can go to the detailed report, choose a date range, and filter by some dimension, and then send everything you see to QuickBooks and create invoices based on time there. Now you know how to set rates, build clients, and track how much you've earned. For more information, check out our other videos. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.